Let's get into it, Lauren. I mean, I know this, this, you told me off camera, this is something that gave you what you wanted. What was that? The final episode. So obviously we'll kind of do a top line and then we'll go back over everything. So like you've said, obviously we, we missed episode seven, but to be honest with you, I had so little to say about it and so much annoyance about how jumpy it was that, uh, yeah, it's just, so jumpy. yeah. It was so, jumpy. so the final episode gave me what I thought this series was going to be. The Agatha's backstory, some context, some substance, some emotion, some buy into the actual story. But it was three quarters of one episode right at the end when this should have been right at the beginning to set the scene. It makes no sense to put it right at the end. I get it, but I don't at the same time. I get that they put it there to explain that the whole witch's road spoilers by the way guys but you know you've had several days um the whole witch's road songs at uh, song case was basically the ballad of agatha and, and nicholas i get that but established that at the beginning like it still would have been a surprise for billy to have created the witch's road aesthetic which also makes sense of the whole production design thing of it looking like a set that makes sense now. I'm okay with that. But my biggest issue with the whole thing, and I've said all the way through these reviews that I want to give it till the end before I give a real judgment. My biggest issue is they've done exactly what they did with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness in the sense that it wasn't Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It was WandaVision 2, which is fine because I loved WandaVision, but make it that. Don't label it something else and market it something else and then make it the Billy Maximoff show. I have a real problem with that. I don't know why they keep doing this. It's They've missed such an opportunity to build Agatha as this character with a human background, even though it was magical and obviously you know, she was sucking the life out of witches the whole time. But it gave it substance. It just did it too late. And it's really well, annoyed me. I, I agree with it we've jumped far ahead here but I, we're going to have to also touch on the penultimate episode which was terrible um but look just touching on what you said the yeah we agreed off camera about this that, that it came way too late and it actually came at a moment which disempowered it because you're expecting after the penultimate episode to have that cliffhanger result so despite arguably agatha's backstory being the best part of the entire show um one, it was misplaced. Two, it wasn't long enough, but it was misplaced so much that I almost didn't care about it because I wanted to get back to what that cliffhanger with Billy was, right? In that sense, it was misplaced, not just because it was in the last episode. I don't entirely think it should have happened at the beginning because you did need to have that continuation of Agatha being a twat, essentially. And I did think that they created that beginning quite well by Catherine Hahn clearly overacting. Clearly, this isn't real, what you're seeing. I like that whole true detective vibe they went for at the beginning. But I would have dropped this backstory about halfway through. And then, so half the series, you think Agatha is a douchebag. And then half of it, she's become sympathetic, so it balances out better. To drop it at the end, especially after a cliffhanger, and just use it as a distraction from the cliffhanger to fill space, really underserved what that's what the impact of that should have been um but let's get back to the beginning of the penultimate episode i have a question hmm. who was the asian witch is bo- that the, the body she was standing over forgive me i'm calling her asian witch i don't remember her name was alice it, her? alice was it that was her, her. yeah she, so she it, it, this this was a scene that was completely unnecessary because it didn't achieve anything apart from just yeah. showing rio's death again it didn't go about anywhere. All it did was go back to her coming out of her body and realizing she was dead. It was there was no reason for it at all. There was no I, no cause. I, I thought that the big build up to the episode that came before was the elderly witch who was doing all of that time jumping. It was her sacrificing herself. I thought that was the big payoff of that episode. Oh, this this was Addison. episodes ago. This is what I mean. So this was ages ago. She died. What? One? Um, Wonder. Um, Agatha killed her. Do you remember they were? It was the throwback where they were all dressed as like in like eighties, and Agatha faced her mother, and Agatha ended up killing her because she sucked her power out of her. But that was ages ago. 
that's what I mean. Yeah, I see going back yeah. to it and her coming out of her body. It was completely like why? Like it, it didn't. There was no. There was no meaning for it at all. Right. So yeah, that's awful. Then we get onto the part where they're inside the Iron Maiden and they're talking about green craft, the cycle of all living things, including decay. Therefore, Rio's death. And you've got Jen, who is <clears throat> desperately trying to tell the audience, <clears throat> makes sense, right? And then Agatha, no. trying... exactly. And then and then she's like, and Agatha dated death. Also makes sense, right? It's like, are you trying to convince me, the audience member, or you yourselves, the skip Again, like but it's makes... irrelevant. It goes back to the big hole of, you know, Rio being deaf. Obviously, we didn't know she was when she came to attack Agatha. If it's someone's time, this is the thing, right? I know there's creative license and this is how it is in the Marvel Universe. Death is not a green witch. And I know they're saying that death has manifested itself as a green witch in the world. No, that's not how it works. Green, no. green witchery, yes, is about the cycle of life, but it's about life. It's not so much about death. To make death a green witch goes against every law of life because death is neutral. Death doesn't fight things. At the end of the day, if it's someone's time to die, the only rule that breaks it is that death has to take a soul, no matter what it is. So the only rule that breaks it is if someone sacrifices themselves or stands in for somebody else's life. Now, that would make sense when it came to the scene of Agatha taking the kiss of death. I'm, I'm taking that that symbolized and dying to save Billy, but death was already coming after Agatha. So it, yep. it, it's so all over the place. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. That annoyed the living bejesus out of me, but hold fire on that. We'll get to it. To build on what you're saying, <laughs> furthermore, furthermore, death in the MCU, sorry, not in the MCU, in the Marvel verse, death is not a green witch, never has been. In Marvel, death is the being which Thanos falls in love with right that's the actual comic rule thanos falls in love becomes completely enamored by death and goes on this crusade to try and impress lady death by doing what he does the snap they never actually yeah, the in the game infinity war storyline which is fine because i always thought ah living embodiment of, be of death that might be a bit too much for the audience to swallow i get why you may have left that out and you just portrayed that sat Thanos is a convincing sociopath. It worked. But if you're then going to bring death in later on, why the hell did you use it when I should have used? It's like, sorry, that's just dumb. And especially for all the reasons yeah. you said, well, making death the green witch, like, ah, ah, the, wrong, 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 wrong. Also, can I... Even, even outside of the Marvel Universe, it's wrong. It is just wrong. So if you're like, in the kind of witchy space like I am or like if you're Wiccan or Pagan or whatever on your like and you know this stuff and I get it again it's creative license they can typically do what they want with it but it goes against every law of life to make death a witch death is neutral death isn't yeah. evil death isn't good so they've made death evil which yeah. doesn't make any sense makes no sense and also, listen, I'll also cover my arse here because I'm on record on the channel saying that the MCU is noted for never being comic book accurate. So I appreciate that outburst might have been a bit misplaced from the guy who says, leave the comic books at the door. But man, if you're going to bring death in, you can do better than this. I'm not saying you have to do the Thanos falls in love with death storyline. We we've crossed that bridge now, obviously. The same death for this? Oh, just, just bad, man. Not good. I also it's want to even say more annoying. Go on. Sorry, it's, it's even more annoying because the cast is so good, the acting is so good, and it's it annoys me even more just because I think so. I think Aubrey Plaza is fantastic. I think Catherine Hahn's fantastic. I thought Joe Locke was fantastic, but they are serving the script and the story they've been given, and that's where the problem is, not how they've delivered it. Hundred percent. 100%. They are working with weak material. It's not their fault. But the byproducts of them working with weak material, wooden weak material, is they come off as pastiches and come off equally as wooden. Like, mm. doesn't matter how good they are as actors, I agree. There's no redeeming this this very, very 5 out of 10 content. Um, I have to say, another thing that really annoyed me at some moments in this 
the costume design was atrocious in some of these moments. Not the stuff at the end in the in what do you think? Not the not the battle stuff at the end. That that was fun. Agatha back in her purple and Wicked in that quasi version of what his comic book character looks like in death and how their colors correlated i thought was really good yeah, as well because they were like a team i'm talking about rio was great as well well it was rio i want to touch on it's one specific moment where they're on the road where agatha's in her in her white shirt and and dark trousers rio's got this crown and leather pants on and i laughed not consciously i just went <laughs> she looked ridiculous <laughs> She looked ridiculous. It looked like cosplay of Rio. Rio looked oh, the, like well, the, the bit the bit where she took the knife and went went through the set, basically. Yeah. Uh, they didn't yeah. even try and make that look magical. She was clearly just cutting through a piece of material. Yeah. That yeah, scene, that was that costume in that scene, that was awful. It just didn't fit. Man, I can rent a piece of fabric and put a hot chicken leather pants for the crown. Mm-hmm. That like this, this is meant to be stuff that elevates you to a realm of fantasy. This is meant to be stuff that makes you escape the real world, forget where you are, and live in the moment of the story they're telling you. And there's just so many little details that are like that looks crap, that's badly delivered, that's poorly written, that's poorly based. And it's just like I want to get into this world. I like witchy mm-hmm. stuff, and that's a, that's it's another like, reason. Like, nah, that's a- slash three. Yeah. That's that's another reason why the whole segment of Agatha's backstory was basically the standout of the entire season because you became more immersed in it because it was it was real. I mean, obviously there's the magical element, but it was in the real world, you know, in amongst you know the the, the meaningfulness of filming in a forest and connecting that with the kind of green, green witchery and the way that they've made Death a green witch and the whole. I mean, birds and stuff like that makes me dead uncomfortable watching it. I've got to be honest, but. It, I thought it was beautifully done. The fact that it was in nature and that connection to nature and life and the cycle and all of that, the way it was done and the way that they were always in the forest when they were when they were traveling and the meaningfulness and the connecting back to the actual story was all the substance that was missing from the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. For me. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, that, that whole back story works for me. Now, Continuing along the road here, there was a quote that came up and I just went, huh? The quote was, the son of the Scarlet Witch stole a second life. First off, how did he steal the second life? He took a body that was basically dead. That wasn't stealing a second life other than stealing a second life from himself, arguably. Um, In the eyes of death. In the eyes of okay. death, it is, though. Cool. Good. I get that. So hang on. Good. Then good. I'm glad you get that. Hang on that, and we're going to come back to how it doesn't make sense. Hold on the fact that you just said you <laughs> get doesn't like people having a second life. Hold that noise. Hardly stealing, in my opinion. But also, if coming back to life, and here's a huge thing that just flips the whole MCU on its head. If coming back to life is a no-no in Death Side, some members of the Avengers are owed a visit. Especially more so than any <laughs> numpkin. But again, that ties back to what you were saying about the how it's written in the MCU of Thor falling in love with death. I mean, Thanos, is there a future in that? It's so, so Thor, Thanos, um, th. Um, I mean, that could tie into a future thing. I mean, it, it's a fair observation, and you're absolutely it's right. Lord. But who? But where where would that land though? Would that land with Thanos? For doing what he did, or would that land with all of the people that came back from the blip? Everyone who came back from the blip gets a second life. Half the population of Earth, by this logic, should be visited by by Rio. This is a fact. Yes. Okay, I get you now. Yeah. Okay. So when and when I'm talking, no about way like... that's going to happen. Which, by proxy, reverse engineering, it makes this. The most glaring of plot holes when you have given me a decade of cinema which led up to the climactic moment of Infinity War of people being killed and the villain winning to then be brought back to life. 
And I know there's people are going to say, no, but they come from a different timeline. Yeah, fine. They come from a different timeline. And then in this timeline, those people are alive again, irrespective of what timeline they came from. They're back in 616 timeline, which means they get a second life mic drop. This is bullshit. Bullshit. Oh. <laughs> oh. annoyed me so much when she was like, they can't steal a second life. What? You can't steal a second life. In the fake death yeah. cinematic universe, you can't steal a second life. Are you... What? How many times has Loki died? Please. Man, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's real plot holes there. Oh, and then there was the part where, oh, when they ended up in Agatha's kind of sci-fi room with all the lights going, tick, 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 going off. And it's like, what was it Jen said? I'll be damned if I let you two idiots die. Why? Look, there is zero, <laughs> zero motivation for her to save Agatha. None. All Agatha has done along the road is be braggadocious about how evil she is, braggadocious about how little she cares for everyone else, openly say how much everyone is there to serve her and her purpose and how she doesn't care about their ends, and that even gets revealed that Agatha was the one responsible for for binding Jen, and yet in that same scene, you're telling me then Jen, that, not, not Jen, sorry, that What's-His-Face has a crisis of conscience and is like, I need to save you, bro. Shut up. There is no motivation for you to save Agatha in that moment. If that If that's me, I'm like, I guess this is how you go out, bitch. Because she's been nothing but evil. And that's why the Agatha backstory was so late as well, because obviously it becomes apparent that getting the coven together and all, which is road was never real. She was just going to drain their energy, their, their powers and kill them. That didn't make sense all the way through because they didn't tell that backstory. And it, yeah, it, that for me, the whole series should have been that backstory. Nothing to do with Billy Maximoff. The whole series should have been to do with the, with the backstory and how she got there. Then you go into into Agatha 2, where you bring that in. So then we'd have understood where it came from. But at the same I mean, it's more complicated than that because obviously they don't want you to know straight away that the Witch's Road isn't real and all of that kind of thing. It's just all over the place. That's the thing. There's, there's, no, there's no deciphering it because it's just all over the place. All over. And I don't understand why the rock, on Tomatoes rating for, for both, it's equal for both critics and audience. Is it like 83%? Why? How are you so easily please? I don't either. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to hate on it. I don't want to dislike it. There, there are many, many elements of it that I do really like. It just doesn't fit together. Yeah. You have to pull things apart. The yeah. Dark it. You're talking to me about we don't do two deaths in the MCU. Like, Liar, liar, pants on fire. Mm. Like, I'm sorry, just no. Um, I'll say this though. Despite that, despite that whole basement scene not making a lick of sense based on the motivations of save Agatha, why? Um, and we'll come back to another problem with this scene. I have to say, the one point where Billy and Agatha were sitting next to each other and he had his eyes closed and he says, Agatha, am I killing this boy to save my brother? That, mm -hmm. that scene I thought was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That scene, I was like, okay, they didn't come back. Yeah, they didn't come back. This is the problem. But I was, so that's never resolved, is it? You kind of think with the way that it ends of let's go find my brother that that happens. I think that was the implication. I suppose they're saving it for that because there is going to be, there is going to be a second series, clearly. And they're probably saving that explanation oh, no. for the next one again, which is fine. But what are they going to do? Are they going to call it Agatha all along series two when it's about Billy Maximoff? No, it'll just be, it'll, it'll probably be called something like The Twins. Uh, who knows? <laughs> it won't be an Agatha series two because Agatha is dead. Um, Agatha is now Catholic. I mean, she's going to be in it. <laughs> I mean, it was cool that when they brought her back as a ghost, they'd made her look like she was in the comics. That 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 was quite cool. But again, it it was never Agatha all along. And is it is that supposed to be an irony? That they've called it Agatha all along because actually it wasn't about Agatha all along. Yeah, you know, did they think they're being ironic with that, or was it just a complete waste? 
I don't know. They, they, I think you're right in saying that they've gotten the titles wrong a few times. Here. Coming back to this basement thing, though. So Billy's gone. <laughs> Jen's gone. Agnes We're not finished the, with the basement. We're not finished with the basement scene. She opens her locket, which, again, in that moment... This is again highlighting how misplaced the bloody backstory was. Because if the backstory had come three episodes earlier in the middle of the season, her opening her locket would have been like, wow, okay, so she's really accepting her fate yeah. here. She's looking to be reunited with her son. It would have actually had some emotional gravitas to it. But as a result, yeah. she opens the locket and you see the hair and you're like, okay, that's obviously from her son and she's been hanging on to this. It doesn't hit as hard as it could. And then the big... Well, what time I get out of jail free card? Aha! Magic flower seed! Magically there! Aren't we lucky that this it happens to be there? Magic flower seed is it happens to be there to save the day and advance the plot. This is what you call plot armor. Plot armor is a device of weak storytelling. It is bad. So bad. Or, just come into my head, <clears throat> possibly, I thought exactly the same thing as I was watching it. But then looking at Billy's desire to save Agatha and he created the whole Witch's Road, could part of that creation have been him putting the seed into that locket because that was her get out of the trial? Listen, at this point, that seed ended up in the locket for no apparent reason, so why not give it some more plot armor? Yeah, so there's no explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no explanation for it. And then we get that. But like you say, there's no substance or meaning behind it. None. It was irrelevant. It made no sense. And here's the terrible thing. They never actually reference that scene, which is ultimately what saves Agatha. You see very clearly, jumping ahead now before we come back, you see very clearly when she's taking the hair and putting it in the locket in the final episode, ain't no seed in there. I don't know. There's no well, seed. That, well, that can explain it. That could be the explanation, but it's an assumption. There's lots of assumptions in this because they don't explain it properly. Like, it, that would be my assumption. If if Billy does, uh, you know, obviously Billy has created this world, it is feasible that that was the, you know, it was placed there as part of the creation of this world because that was her get out of the trial. Mm-hmm. It's feasible, but you've got to dig for that. You shouldn't have to dig for that. No, you shouldn't have to dig for that. It's like when... The big, the big battle when Billy's like, is this how Nicholas died? Which is what brought her back and made her, you know, take the kiss of death. We know it's not how, we now know it's not how Nicholas died. So what was the trigger for Agatha to go, oh, okay, I'll go and kill myself now so I can save you? Because it has no connection to Nicholas. Because when you say things like that, you remind me of my son. <laughs> That's weak. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, what speaking is who you're bringing in the battle now? They literally get their asses handed to them by death. Like, Rio slaps them about. They, they literally don't have a hope against her, right? Wiccan even says, sorry, Billy, we'll call him just Billy. Billy even says to Agatha, this is futile, which she agrees with and ultimately does the whole kiss of death thing. But now, Here's where this annoys me. Because if death was this strong all along and Agatha basically had no chance against her, even at her full power like this, what was the point of this whole show? Because why did we have an entire series based on death waiting to kill Agatha when she could have done it in the first episode on the fact that Agatha taunts her and says, don't you want me at full power? When in fact that full power is, as the characters just say, useless against death. Even Agatha of full power can't mess with death. So what, you know, if I'm, if I'm deaf and I'm smart because, you know, I'm the balance of life, essentially. When Agatha says to me in episode one, don't you want me in full power? My attitude would have been, bitch, please. You are full power is less power than I can in the dirt under my pinky fingernails. Made no sense. And that ties into the whole... When she has when she has Nicholas, or when she gives birth to Nicholas, and she says, "All I can give you is time," which does tie into you know law of death and all yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. She can gift that, but why has she? Like, there's no. I mean, because like she said, "My love, my love." There's no backstory as to their relationship. 
Like th- there was so much that they could have done with Agatha's backstory and even, you know, brought it to that point. Because at that point, we still don't know what their relationship was. We don't know how they got together, why they got together, what triggered that, why Death keeps giving her these passes. When Death comes for her in the first place and like you say, the whole you want me at full power thing, Death would just go, like you say, Death would just go, now, nah, mate, it's your time. Bye. Like it, it's and there's no I mean, I'm all for it if there's a reason behind all of these things is happening, but there's no reason. They've given us no reason apart from the fact that they were in a relationship and Death probably has some love for her, but that all goes out the window when it comes to the battle. And then Death's doing all this thing about I'm thinking death by a thousand cuts. Death doesn't kill. Death doesn't kill. Like de- death comes to take the soul from someone whose time it is to die. Death doesn't kill. It- it's. It... I'd excuse that by saying comic book logic. Uh, um, you're going outside. Oh yeah, yeah, but it has to make sense. You're blending two worlds. You're but it blending. Has to make sense. Blending mythological death and comic book death. But it's well, it's, I, it's the I natural law of death as well. Sure. But that right. actual death doesn't need to apply to comics. But if they're going to bring it into the comic book world and make it their own, make it make sense. Uh, doesn't make sense. Uh, not if it makes sense. Not if it makes sense. Um, speaking of death, not Rio death, uh, Agatha's kiss of death. Uh, that death was completely devoid of emotional gravitas. I felt nothing. No holy Christ, mm-hmm. no surprise. No feeling. Despite the producers and creators' best efforts to do that little slow piano to emotionally manipulate me, I would really struggle to understand why anyone would see that moment as a... It's like, no. Yeah. No, it, it, I, I felt nothing. It was always going to come. It was always going to come. Like when, from the beginning, where Rio comes for her in the first place, oh, you don't want me now, you'll get me later, basically, was what it was saying. Again, goes against kind of all logic. So we knew it was going to happen, I think. Because yeah. you're never going to uh, beat death. Yeah. And, and, so there was and, no and, surprise and there was no... Th- there wasn't enough drama in it. it th- yeah, I, I think it's because of the build-up as well. Here, here, here's, and, the, here's one of the killer killer missteps now, right? So I brought up earlier the, that, that quote, uh, the, the son of the Scarlet Witch stole the second life. And you correctly which is why I'm bringing this point in now, you correctly said, no, I get that you can't be stealing second lives, right? Even though I've rebuted that with, well, half the Avengers and half of planet Earth then, right? So, but we agree. Mm -hmm. Despite that glaring plot hole that literally half of existence in the MCU needs a visit from Rio then, right? We we agree that the foundation of you shouldn't, you, you can't, according to Death's Law, steal the second life, right? That hasn't changed with Agatha's death. Why in the blue F does she let Billy go? Talk to me about that. It what makes death? no sense. Yeah, why does she let Billy go? Just, like because, just because she's got Agatha. She's got Agatha. Her desire to get Agatha, which was established in episode one of the series, has got nothing to do with the fact that Billy Maximoff, the son it's of the star... separate thing. They are two separate story threads just the characters of which happen to be on a joint yeah. venture together. But they are two separate lives that is owed to death. They are not together. They are completely mutually exclusive. So she's now got Agatha, uh, the thing she wanted from episode one. Tick. But now she's killed Agatha. Billy is standing right in front of her. He's there for the taking. The son of the Scarlet Witch stole a second life. She says it in that damn episode. I'm Frothing at the mouth here, I'm so angry. It doesn't change the fact <laughs> that the son of God, which stole a second life, that's forgiven now because of Agatha's death. Nope, makes no sense. And she even says to him, You can go. Why? Yep. And again, the only way to explain that is by digging deeper into it. And you shouldn't have to dig deeper into it. It could be a sense of her intent was always to come and get Agatha. She felt an empathy there because Agatha was protecting him and because she took Nicholas away, she didn't want to take Billy away. And, but you have to dig, 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 dig for, a poten- for that potential explanation with no evidence of that being correct. It's a potential explanation. It would make sense. 
what is it? Is that what it was? We don't know. There's there's no explanation for it. He just lets him go. The son of the scarlet. I'm annoyed. Witch. I'm more annoyed because I want to love this. Yeah, yeah, me too. The son of the scarlet witch stole a second life. He owes me a life. He's standing right in front of me. Go. Go. Not in the mood. Not feeling it today. Then no, not feeling it. Just yeah. go. Unless again, an, another another diggable explanation is that she got so much power and so much from Agatha's death that she didn't need to take him. But again, there's no explanation. No explanation. Is that, that do you know what? There's there's also no ex. Sorry, but there's also no explanation as to why death was coming for Agatha in the first place. So if it was Agatha's time hundreds of years ago and she's been chasing her for hundreds of years, she's death. She can find her anywhere she wants. But there was no explanation as to why death is coming after Agatha. Yes, okay, you've established the fact that they had a relationship. But is she coming after her just because they had a bad breakup? No, of course she's not. Something else will have happened or it would have been Agatha's time or whatever. But why is it taking so long for death to come for Agatha? There's a potential that she could have been protected by Wanda's magic. But that was only a short period of time. She's been around for hundreds of years. There's also no insert into when Agatha was actually killed by a coven. And how did she come back? Yep. yep. Like, there's all these things that could have been told in this series, series as Agatha's backstory. If they'd have Go done that in the first place, three. everything that they've done. Go back and watch episode three of our yeah. review. Go back and watch episode three of our reviews. I told you this stuff wouldn't be resolved. I called this from episode three. They weren't No, no I know. Um, and I, I didn't discount that you weren't going to be right. I was just hoping that you were going to be wrong. <laughs> oh, mate, so I was just hoping. I was really... But no, like, he, all of these points that we discussed... Sense. Yeah, and there's more, but carry on. No, I was going to say, all of these points that we've discussed would have filled a series about Agatha... Yep. That would have had substance and context and emotion, and you would have bought into the character, and they've just wasted all of it. It's, Completely. Ah. Completely. And now, here's he, before I give you this point, I want to ask you a question. Did Go. Billy also create the coven, or were they real? Interesting. No, I don't think he created the coven because I think the oh, connection to the fact that she did this and that you know it came from this you know song that she made up with Nicholas, their ballad. That was how they lured them, um, you know, into her sucking their powers away and killing them and all of that. No, I don't think he created the coven. She put that, that together because she knew what she was doing. We just didn't know what she was doing at the time. Great, I completely agree with you. So now here's my point about Billy creating the road, the whole road, right? Uh, if Billy made the road, how did he fabricate the trials that were so personal to each of the witches when in the series chronology and timeline, he'd only just met them? If they're real, how does he know about all of their histories, about what their fears were, about the things they need to overcome? Like, well, he didn't even know that he'd created it. He... Exactly. So how can he, the creator of the road, and who doesn't know the coven, be making up the trials that the witches have to overcome? No. Again, didn't land, didn't make sense. No, it doesn't. But, you know, is that supposed to be an indication into just how powerful he is and how little control he has over his magic at this time? Like, his magic has literally just gone out there and created this without him even knowing it. So it is feasible to say that his magic is powerful enough to do that because he's done that without even knowing. Sure. But, but again, Jesus no Christ. explanation. Jesus Christ. Well, if, if that's the case, and I agree, that is a valid explanation. But if that's where we're going, Jesus Christ, we are going into the realms of hashtag reasons, hashtag just because. But Billy can do anything, it's fine. That doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. It's just magic. He, he magic. He has yeah. power. Magic. Yeah. Magic Billy. It's your, uh, your, your favourite saying. Be because reasons. Yeah, because reasons. There has to be a limit as to what the power is. Well, sorry, there has to be a, a limit as to where his power ends and where logical explanation in a narrative starts. And at the moment, it's not there. Billy created the road. Billy didn't create the Coburn. 
I agree. And we further know that he didn't create the coven because Jen is flying off in the real world at the end. So she's definitely real, right? Mm. And all the other witches, yeah. we all mm. are real because uh, what's the Asian witch called? Alice? Alice. Alice. Rio comes and claims her. So she's real, right? The coven are established as real. He has not known them long enough or know enough about them to be able to create trials in his road about them. No. No. He's got, as shown in the show, a rudimentary understanding of of um, telekinesis. Rudimentary. That's it. Yes, he's got this kind of hidden power of being able to create illusions, just like his mummy. But the illusions and the trials have to be tied to some form of connaissance, some form of knowing. It's like, I know that if I wanted to give you a trial, your trigger points would be dogs, husband, friends, that sort of stuff, right? Make stuff up like yeah. that to really put you through pain. Like, I... In the same way you'd know what my trigger points would be. But you have to know a person to get their trigger points. He's just met them. But that's the, can't they can explain that. Magic. that. That's the easiest thing for them to explain away. It's lazy, but it is the easiest thing for them to explain away. It's like that just shows how powerful Billy is as to what he can do without even knowing he's doing it. That's how I, I guarantee that's how they, they would explain that away. Sure. I don't agree, sure. but that's yeah, what they'll I'm do. I'm with you. But it doesn't change the fact that this is awful. Awful. Um, and also, and, oh, when, when, when he's trying to banish her at the end, in the, uh, at the end, when he's created that circle and stuff, and she says, I can't face it. Why? Why can't she face it? That, that, they're probably setting that up for the next one, aren't they? But again, if, if the way they haven't in explained things in depth, they probably won't explain it in that either. In what's been established... They're both asleep. They've gone to sleep happy together. There's no beef between them. There's no bad feeling. They haven't ended on a bad note. Rio has come for Nicholas at night. She signaled him, come here. He follows her willingly. And she even says, give mummy a kiss, which she does willingly to highlight, hey, there's no bad feeling here. And he goes and dies, right? So Agatha, mm. as far as her son is concerned, has done nothing wrong. Her son willingly Bill welcomed. Yeah. No, bullshit. Guilt. Uh, yeah, it's guilt. Like, I think that with anything like that, despite having no responsibility for what happened, there's guilt. There's going to be guilt. Like, it, it's that, that taps into human nature, I think. But I think it's extreme when she's saying she can't face him. Surely there should be some... Can I, can I tell you a more, Aaron? If I'm living in this universe yeah. and death comes to take my babies, my attitude is I can't wait to see them again. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. There should be that. It's but not, I do think that it's I do not, think it was on guilt. And now I can't face them. It's like, oh, stop it. Mm. If I had done it, something to cause the it's, death, yeah, it's then loose. Yeah, it's But maybe, maybe that's what they're saying. It's like she feels like she did. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it kind of taps back into, like, the birth scene where Death was like, I can give you only time. And she's probably taking that on as, I didn't give you enough time. I didn't look after you well enough. I didn't protect you well enough. I couldn't protect you. I think that's what it'll come down to. Because of how powerful she is and what she can do, the one thing she couldn't do was protect him and save him. So maybe that, when you tap into Agatha as a character... That's probably what it's leaning into. Like she feels like she should have been able to save him. She should have been able to protect him. And that's the one thing she couldn't do. But that's the one thing she felt like she did for Billy. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. In that battle seat. When we dialed into it that way, potentially. It, that that emotional logic also didn't land for me. As a parent, that did not land. It didn't when I was watching it either. It's only just landed for me as we've just been discussing it. And digging deeper into it. That would make sense if you dig into Agatha as a character. Like, if you think about the fact that how powerful she is, who she can fight, who she can kill, the one thing she couldn't do was save her son. So in her head... that powerful. Every time Agatha's been in a fight, she's lost. Scarlet Witch, messed her up. Billy, messed her up. The Coven, 
messed her up. The trials needed help. Rio didn't stand a chance. Is that the final song? That's true. The only thing we've <laughs> seen her, of her being powerful, the only thing we've seen of her being powerful is when she's fighting even less powerful witches, tricking them on the on the witches' road ballad to steal their power. In terms of when she's come up against anything of even a remote force, she's buckled. Mm, that's true. This is, like, actually, this is what they've shown me. But they're kind of expecting, mm. don't, don't join the dots. Just go with the emotional manipulation we're giving you. It's like, no. If you're going to show me something, I'm going to retain that information. Mm. I learned from a young yeah, two point two equals four. They're trying to tell me, ah, but it can also be potato. No. <laughs> No, yeah, that's a fair point. That is a very fair point. She's sucking all this power from all these witches and has done for hundreds of years. She should be infallible. She should be able... Yeah. She's got nothing to Like, it's not even... It's not even like you can say, like, she's beaten everything else and the one thing she couldn't beat was death. That would make it make more sense. But... They don't don't like to make things make sense. So... In this series? No, they really don't. Um... Final thoughts then on Agatha from me. There was no resolution with Rio and death at the end. She just walks off. Billy is still kicking about having defied death. And the whole revelation of him being Billy Maximoff was telegraphed. From a mile off, she had twice two opportunities to take him, didn't. Um, There was no explanation as to why death is even after Agatha. The Agatha backstory, which was the one really good part of the show, was misplaced. There was no post credit scene, so it almost betrays its own structure. And I don't know what they were going for with that. That instantly gets a minus. I'm not giving Agatha any more than a 5 out of 10. I think I'd probably have to agree. Like My final thoughts on it are the two best parts of it were the backstory in the final episode and the beginning of the build of this whole detective cover up in Westview and the way that she was living for me, the entire series should have been spliced between the two. As we see Agatha living this fake detective life, whilst we go, whilst we throw back to her backstory, explaining why she is the way she is and why she's living this detective life. That should have been the entire series, but no, they've thrown a load of, Um, box ticking and you know random cameos to please to please the avid fans and they've made it about that and it's you know it's even you know we can throw back to what we've discussed in in other episode reviews where you know making billy gay giving a boyfriend all of that is great you know no issues with that whatsoever but it was clearly a box tick because it hasn't gone anywhere they've not brought they brought his boyfriend back in when they were explaining how Billy took the body and all of that, which I thought was nice and gave him a bit more context. But it was like it was building to something that should have been more, should have made, you know, like make it a thing. Like, why are you making it a thing? It's great that you're making it a thing, but why? Give us a why. There are no whys well, in this whole thing. This is this is the point I was making when, when we found out it was gay a few episodes ago. And I said, you don't ever see them making a big deal about straight people being straight. In order to normalize homosexuality on screen or being gender fluid on screen or being trans on screen, you have to treat it as normal. You can't make such a big deal out of it and say, look, we've got gay people. Look, gay, gay. It's like that's not normalizing homosexuality. Did you you see where they did you see where they did it again? Yeah, right. Just yeah, the, trans the, trans the trans lives matter. matter. What oh. wonderful message. Wonderful message. But don't just yeah. flonk it in there for for the yeah. likes. That that's basically what it feels. And I I think that's offensive. I think that yeah. would be offensive to a lot of people in that community. The one thing it's I did like about that the set whole, to was, when they come about, around. The whole series has been about a gay character. And then you, you imagine I imagine if I was trans and the whole series has not been about me or my societal struggles or even my representation. But then a big corporation like Disney decides to virtue signal and put the flag in at the end and somehow gain bonus points from the people who can't see it for what it is, which is weak, forced virtue signaling. Give me an entire series about a trans character 
and bloody yeah. normalize the fact that they're trans. Don't make a big deal out of it. You, you know, don't make them one of these trans pastiches and just make them a cool comic book character. I'm there day one. You want to put trans rights messaging and series which has nothing to do with trans rights and feels at odds with who the character is because he's not trans? Oh, a few, four out of ten for that. It's take it's taking the struggle of an entire community and just using it to box tick, and I just think that's so wrong. It's yeah. so wrong. Like I, I, I agree with the message. It's a positive yeah. message. Yeah, it is. It is a positive message. It's a message that I'm behind. You know, I'm all for that. But make it mean something. Don't just use it to tick a box. Yeah, there's just, just no so need for it. it. The one thing that I did like about that set we're against it. Just so we're really clear, if someone wants to take this segment mm-hmm. on the record now. The message that Lauren and I are saying right now is not we don't support trans rights matter as a message. What we don't support is the use, the forced use of this messaging in a way that didn't actually help the movement and was clearly just used as a means to get people talking, to hopefully get some trans eyes on the show, to make a bottom line. That's malicious and insidious. I don't approve of that. Yeah, I agree. It actually, fe- even the placement of the flag feels like someone's gone. Oh, I know what we should do. We should stick this flag up here because that, you know, that'll be really good for us. We'll get some likes for that, and that's wrong. You don't take yeah. someone else's struggle and use it to tick a box. And I thought that was wrong. Disregarding that, what I did really like about the set of the bedroom was the little Easter eggs of clearly where they've been inspired from. So the Buffy poster, the Craft poster, the Rocky Horror poster, all of those things. I thought that was really cool. But that was tainted by the virtue signaling of a misplaced message, I, I found. Um, but again, I just I refer back to your explanation just then. Um, this is again about, but yeah, I, I think I almost have those types of flags in there. But you can't have them in such a way where both of us who are supporters of this movement and message are jumping out and going, Jesus Christ, hit me on the nose with it and talk about bringing unwanted attention to it. Not not saying the movement need, has got unwanted attention. I'm talking about the way that the light is being shown on the movement is like it's forced. It's misplaced. It's forced. It's used, like like said multiple times just then, it's using somebody else's struggle, you know, a community of struggle to virtue signal and it's just wrong and I, I, it's something that I've, you know, I've got several trans friends and I, I, it'd be an interesting topic to bring up with them to see how they feel about it um it's yeah it, it just it just feels like they were running out of ideas and I just thought yeah we'll just we'll just oh, think about it. don't forget this guy's part of the lgbtqia plus community if anything they should have do you know what they should have done have the flag on there that would have made so much more sense than having that message in big bold letters have the lgbtqia plus yeah. flag that because that's part of his it is part of that that is part of his identity and then it tells us it tells it sends the message out in a way that actually is relevant to the character that we've been following for over two months Mm. put the flag on all inclusive on that note it's a five out of ten Oh, I was worried about this show, and I really wish I had been wrong. Um, and I, yeah. I, I wish you had as well. You know I was giving it faith, and I was just really, really hoping for the best. But like I say, I wasn't saying you weren't going to be right. I was just hoping you were wrong, and yeah. you weren't. Sucks. Um, I, I'm not even that excited to see what happens next with Billy. I'm, I'm really not. I couldn't really care. Because they haven't, they've taken two months, and my my attitude is. And they just sort of, positioned it all wrong. Like, just make it about Billy in the first place. No. Yeah. Yep. 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 And on that bombshell, mm-hmm. we're going to bid you adieu with this final message. If you stuck with us until the end, good job. Um, but uh, there's going to be some new content dropping on the channel in the coming weeks. There's a few interviews dropping in the coming weeks with uh, with some of my interviews from the London Film Festival. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I've been crazy busy with work and they're overdue now. They are coming. There are There is some new top 10 content coming, but it's short. It's like six minutes long. <laughs> so look forward to that, guys. In the, It'll drop around the sort of Gladiator 2 Remembrance Day time. 
uh, mid-November. Be on the lookout for that. But for now, we're going to find another TV show to rage or rave about. Uh, I'm Nico Luro. This is Lauren, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now, guys.